Hi, I'm Paul McCormack. I'm an artist from New York. Um, probably best known for my portraits in watercolor and oil. Um, if you're not familiar with my work, you can visit the website at McCormackStudios.com. And I'm here today to show you a watercolor palette that I designed and is being produced by Jerry's. This is the palette. Um, it has a, it's made of very durable hard plastic. It has a snap-on cover. It comes off very easily, like so. And the palette itself has nine large mix-in wells. Okay. It's been my experience um, teaching students when they come in, they usually have a palette that's just one large mixing tray. And what happens is that they try to mix up their light and their shadow and whatnot, and it all kind of merges together and kind of turns into mud. The way I work, every element in my painting, it could be the face, it could be the hair, the background, the cloth, every element is broken down simply into a light half tone and dark. Okay? Three values, three colors. That's why the palette's designed in this fashion. I will have my light, I will have my half tone, and I will have my dark for the flesh. In this row, I can have my light, half tone, and dark for, say, the hair. Over here, light, half tone, and dark for the garment or background or actually any other element that's in the painting. Um, you also have 18 smaller wells on the, on the side, and if you work more like a traditional watercolor, so you could lay all your colors out in that fashion. Um, Personally, I use them for smaller mixtures, um, say the iris color or something like that, um, little small color accents. I do not lay all my colors out. I put my colors out as needed when I work. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. Um, let me just put this lid to the side. Also, the lid doubles as a large mixing area. Say if you have a large background or a large area to cover, you have this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will be demonstrating over here, but first I want to talk about the wells themselves and the way they're designed. Um, my basic flesh palette, um, we'll start with that, is yellow ochre, rose matter genuine, and cerulean blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yellow ochre, I'm going to put it in the upper corners of three of the wells. I'm going to take the Rose Matter Genuine. I'm going to do the same. And the Cerulean Blue. My flesh palette, it's a very simple red, yellow, blue color theory. Okay, let's start to mix some colors and I'll show you how this works. Okay, I'm going to be taking my flesh tones from our model today, our model, Meredith, um, was nice enough to pose for us today. Um, what I'm going to start with first is actually the color of a light source. So we're trying to replicate sort of a north light, a cool light source. All right? And I find that the cool light source is easily replicated by using cerulean blue with just a touch of rose matter. Now the color that I'm looking at is if you look at the highlight right on her forehead right here. And in the painting that would be right here. You can see it's a very cool color. So that's what I'm going to start with. Now you can also see that when I wet these colors, they all pool right into the middle of each well. So right now I'm just starting with the cerulean blue and the rose matter. And this is going to be a very, very light wash. This will actually become the very soft edge highlights that we see in the face. Now, normally, if you're familiar with my work, um, it usually takes me about 80 hours just to do a simple head and shoulders. Um, mixing these three initial colors could take me about 20 minutes to a half hour. Um, 
but let me just show you how we go about it. Next, I'm going to mix the local color of the face. That's the overall color of Meredith, Meredith's um, complexion. Um, so we're going to start with the yellow ochre, the rose matter, Now Meredith has a very fair complexion. It definitely leans on the cool side. So we're going to have to neutralize this with some of the cerulean. Also, never judge your color in the palette. You have to test it on a piece of paper, okay? Because it will look completely different. Okay? It's going to dry lighter. It's also going to dry much cooler too. Okay, and I start by just making little tiny swatches here, just looking at the color and looking at my model. I'm going to go over to the shadowed side. Now this is going to be a thicker mixture, less water. If you're new to watercolor, you could think of the water as your white paint. Okay, if you want it lighter, you just add more water. So I'm looking like a warm, grayed down violet color for my shadows. Okay, I'm getting very close to my actual mixtures. Um, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to perfect these. And when we come back, I'll show you how we test them um, and how we apply them on the actual painting. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And I believe I have my mixtures close to perfection and I think we're ready to go. Um, also keep in mind the way I work, I work with a lot of glazes. So these mixtures that I have are about two to three values lighter than our actual subject. This is going to leave a lot of room for glazing um, and building it up slowly. That's how you get all your subtle value changes and color changes. Um, now before I take these colors and actually apply them to the painting, um, to the drawing, I'm going to test them. I'm going to test them exactly how I would apply them on the painting itself. So what I'm going to do is take a scrap piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to wet it down, make a large swatch of these three colors. I'm going to start with the light, color of a light source sort of a violet, very light. Also note, if you're working with the cerulean blue, cerulean is very opaque, so you need to mix it thoroughly. Before Every time before you hit the paper, you need to mix it. Otherwise, it's going to separate and appear very grainy. So I'm going to make a large swatch of this violet. It's very light, as you can see. I'm going to go into my local color, local flesh color. Again, mix it thoroughly. There's very little cerulean in there, but still, mix it thoroughly. Now, over about two-thirds of this, I'm going to make a swatch of that color. Okay. Remember to test your colors on top of each other, because this will appear very differently if you test it onto the white piece of paper. I'm going to let that soak in for a little bit, and then we're going to test our shadow color over about a third of that. Again, you can see how it separates in the palette. And then you can see when you mix it. And that's the color we're looking for. And over a small portion, just let that soak in a little more. If you find the cerulean blue difficult to work with, you could always switch to a different blue. I mean, there was a time when I used cobalt, which is a lot more transparent and it's a lot easier to work with. So that's an option. Okay, we'll test our shadow. Okay, now we're going to let those soak in. We're going to let them dry. 
The main reason for this test swatch, um, well, I shouldn't say the main reason, another reason is, is because I build everything up in glazes and layers, I have this will serve as my testing ground for subsequent um, washes and glazes, and I will know exactly the color and value, um, what the color and value is going to be when I actually apply it to my painting. All right, so now we'll take the blow dryer and we're going to dry this. And then once it's dry, you know, just take it, look at your model, look at the colors and say, okay, this looks pretty good, or do I have to alter my shadow color, make it warmer, make it cooler, make it darker? You know, you have all these options, but now you know exactly what it's going to look like on here before you um, actually paint. Okay, um, the next step is now I'm going to actually apply these to the painting. Um, so we are going to do that in another little mini demo, so hope you check that one out.